tabletop RPGs were once considered a fringe hobby. One that most people would avoid at all costs seeing it not just as a nerdy interest, but, and I quote from my father, a world full of old greasy white men with no interest in the real world, unquote. <sighs> Now with Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and the advent of actual play shows like Critical Role and Dimension 20, Tabletop has had a serious renaissance, now being seen as not just a game, but a creative outlet for storytelling and escapism. Only one problem. Everyone is only playing Dungeons & Dragons. I'm Ben, and I am here to introduce you all to the wonderful world of Call of Cthulhu. Hello everyone, today we're doing something a little bit different on the channel. Normally we focus in the world of media analysis, film criticism, that kind of stuff. But as some of you may have subscribed for and some of you might just be waiting for, today we're going to be diving into the world of tabletop roleplay in a way that is a little bit more than just our very fun live streams that you should come by and check out every uh, final Wednesday at the end of the month. But without further ado, let's begin our list of the top five reasons to play Call of Cthulhu over Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Now going to this with our number five spot, I just want to say I do love both of these games equally. It is just as this list goes on, you'll see that this game covers a lot of strong suits that Dungeons & Dragons doesn't quite nail. And a lot of people would instantly say, oh, but isn't Call of Cthulhu about being a librarian in the 1920s trying to not die from unspeakable horrors? And I would say, yeah, that's, th that, that is still true. But it can also be about a group of fantasy adventurers leaving home to find the hidden treasure of Yig in a kingdom of serpent people in the desert. It can also be space bounty hunters taking on a tyrannical government, one that has been infested with body snatching aliens from out of time. The point here is that Dungeons and Dragons, while it does live off of fantasy and high combat, it's not something that's exclusive to that system. And Call of Cthulhu, while definitely marketed as a major horror game and does have incredible strengths in the horror genre, can also be extremely fun and pulpy and can also be high fantasy. You have settings like the Dreamlands, you have expansions like Pulp Cthulhu, and this will allow you to really get into whatever sort of story that you want to incorporate in your world. Perhaps you're starting a campaign as a horror one shot or just a couple horror scenarios thrown together, but then you want your characters to get stronger and be able to deal with something that is a lot more intense. So you can take all the elements that Call of Cthulhu has and Chaosium has prepared and really be able to build whatever sort of campaign setting that you're looking for. And the good thing here is that you don't really need to do a ton of homebrewing. The system is very good for being able to create essentially whatever you want as flexible as you need it without having to say that you can't use X, Y, and Z. For example, if you wanted to do a 1920s Dungeons and Dragons campaign, but you didn't want to have magic, then you would have to essentially neuter a ton of the classes that exist already within the system. Meanwhile, Call of Cthulhu has everything there. You can add spells if you want, you can add any sort of skill that you want, and it's extremely easy to just insert and go with. Reason number four, it is easy to learn. Dungeons and Dragons 5e can be notoriously difficult to teach. Each class is vastly different and most first time players are gonna have a really big problem when it comes to this to the point where I think most first time players remember picking a martial class because the casters were just too damn confusing. And there's frankly a lot of information that is thrown at a D&D player at any time, especially as far as making skill roles are concerned, which can lead new players to sometimes being a little bit more quiet and not insertful at the table, strictly because they don't really know how to do things and they don't want to slow the game down. Meanwhile, Call of Cthulhu can be summed up like this. You want to do something. That something likely pertains to a skill. That skill has a number. Roll your dice and try to roll below that number. Did you? 
then congratulations, you did the thing. Character progression is also just simply easier than it is in Dungeons and Dragons. While Dungeons and Dragons uses a leveling system where essentially every time you hit a milestone or gain a certain amount of XP, you, depending on your class, can either be handed a tiny slip of paper or a long Wikipedia article of shit that you need to write down on your character sheet somewhere and or memorize. It can be, again, very daunting for first time players and can it kind of bog down the game a lot more than you'd expect. Meanwhile, Call of Cthulhu has a very simple and grounded idea for this, which is skill improvements. So after you hit every milestone or a piece where the DM or keeper decides that it is appropriate for you to essentially get a level up, you take the skills that you have succeeded at in your previous adventure and you get a chance to improve them and make them better. Now this, in my opinion, is just so much more grounded than it would be in Dungeons and Dragons where essentially you can go to sleep and then wake up as powerful as a god depending on what kind of level you're taking or multi-classing you're doing. Meanwhile, this feels like you put in the work and you are now being rewarded for the work that you put in. And the other thing that you might be asking is, oh, well, that sounds all good, but do you get spells? And the answer is yes, if your keeper's really nice and is okay with breaking their game just a little bit. And that leads us into number three. It's not about the game. It is about the emphasis on role play and story. Most of us new to D&D wanted to play because we saw the amazing stories that were being told on these live shows like Critical Role. But as most people in Dungeons and Dragons are aware, while that magic is definitely there at times, it can become very bogged down with how the game needs to be run and balanced. Most dungeon masters really get bogged down in number crunching and encounter creating. And eventually you end up with a lot of sessions that just look like a large dungeon crawl or large sets of combat that don't really scratch that itch that a lot of people come to roleplay for. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is something amazing about Dungeons and Dragons tactical game element of it. It's just not what the core component really is. Most people that play Dungeons and Dragons would not find it remiss to say that it feels like a set of mini games put together with roleplay in between. Meanwhile, in Call of Cthulhu, roleplay is the gameplay. Most adventures and scenarios rely on investigators to interact with their world in ways that you just would not do as a powerful D&D player character. Combat is seen as a method best avoided if possible, and roleplay and problem solving really taking the forefront of how the game is played. There is a serious emphasis on investigation and social encounters, and again, if you're really clever, you don't have to fight. Or if you're really clever, the fight goes drastically in your favor. This is the element that also makes the game significantly more atmospheric and immersive. Because you're spending less time in combat, you're spending a lot more time in roleplay. Overall, player dynamics become a lot more tight than they would be in situations like Dungeons and Dragons, and it is a lot easier to build those types of roleplay-based stories out of this. And this is something that can just, unless the DM is extremely good, it can sometimes feel very fleeting in pieces like Dungeons and Dragons. But then you might be saying to yourself, okay, so I see that there's an emphasis on story and there's an emphasis on role play, but I mostly know how to do encounter building. This seems like it's gonna be a lot of writing. Well, good news for you. Number two, there is an incredible amount of content that has been prepared for this game. Dungeons and Dragons modules have an issue. Um, a lot of them are either extremely linear dully written or poorly balanced. And yes, I'm looking at you, Eberron. You know what you did. Hi, Ben here in post-production, quickly explaining that. Uh, the first module within Eberron Rise from the Last War is supposed to be played at all level one. It cannot be played at all level one.
Call of Cthulhu, on the other hand, has a vast amount of pre-written material for it. And that is one of the main focuses of its publisher, Chaosium, is just being able to supply well-written content for this game. Because there is less of an emphasis on the gameplay aspect, most adventures, the only thing that people are looking for and the only thing that the community really responds to is a well-written story. Everything else is something that can easily be somewhat balanced out through the Keeper themselves making calls on their own. But there are so many resources that go into this and such a vast community that contributes to making sure that these things get written and written well. And one of the very exciting things about Call of Cthulhu is that there's no lack of one-shot adventures. It is very easy to get a group of people together for just one night and get a full experience out of the game without having to potentially come back for seconds. And really important, without having to rush to the end. A quick minor point of clarification though, Dungeons and Dragons does have a vast amount of written scenarios, one that likely could dwarf Call of Cthulhu's. However, the main point here is that Call of Cthulhu has an exceptional high quality when it comes to their scenarios, even the small and amateur written ones. And for our final note, which any DM and player would love, is that this game is always challenging. There is a bit of a meme on the internet that if you're playing Call of Cthulhu, your character will probably die very quickly. And while that might be true for one shots, which usually are designed to have the horror atmosphere and kill off characters close to the end at the climax, this is frankly speaking, not entirely true. The way that most Call of Cthulhu is run is that you make it very known to the characters how fragile they are and they will usually act accordingly. And you as the DM should be knowing to not be a dick and just kill your characters within the first hour. But one of the problems with Dungeons and Dragons is that most DMs will straight up avoid going into the high levels if they can. Encounters can become unbalanced past, say, let's say level 14, and players can become so goddamn powerful that most of them just become cocky. And then you as the DM send a really challenging boss that you know is just gonna humble them, and then they mollywop that and then walk into the next room giving themselves pats on the backs and cheering and your self-esteem is just ruined. We've all been there. Call of Cthulhu doesn't really have that problem. Again, player characters are a lot more fragile, but in reality, they're only as fragile as let's say a level one or two Dungeons and Dragons character, which is a portion of the Dungeons and Dragons where the game, no matter what, does feel extremely challenging. Hit points for the most part stay very low and combat is always foreboding and monsters, my gosh, are always seen as a serious threat. But if you wanted to, let's say, bring in Pulp Cthulhu in order to get expanded hit points and extra luck rules so that you know you just don't die quickly, it still remains a damn challenge, and that has to do with the sanity element of this. Because keepers have two ways of really whittling down their players. The first is hit points, and the second is their goddamn mind. Bouts of madness, indefinite insanity, and delusions, and the threat of permanent insanity all can pose a threat to really powerful pulp investigators that can take on a Shoggoth head on. Because the thing with Call of Cthulhu, again, is that while balance is somewhat important, the main goal here is to tell that story. And they're gonna give you all the tools that you need to not just tell that story, but make it feel very real for your players. Anyway, that is all the room I have for today. I just wanna thank the very fine people at the Call of Cthulhu subreddit, r slash Call of Cthulhu. I made a post on there and everyone really came together and fleshed out a lot of the points that were on this list. And 
really generated what I thought was kind of an amazing conversation. So I have the link to that thread down below. And if you're from that thread, say hi. There's, I'm sure there's gonna be more to expand upon in the comments here. And if you want more Call of Cthulhu content, be sure to like this video and subscribe. We will be posting more of these in the future. And we also have our monthly live stream at where we jump into sometimes something based off of a movie or a TV show, and sometimes just a one shot that we felt like doing. It's called Die Time. Check it out. It's a great time. And as always, I'm Ben, and thank you for watching.